Which position? So he's going to be on his back, and um, I'm going to be inside control. So, so, so here inside control. You always got to make sure you're blocking out the hit. That way they don't get their guard back, right? So my my knee, my right knee or my right hip can be blocking. My right hand can be blocking. But for the purpose of this, I'm just using my elbow and my knee to kind of control his hip movement. So it's gonna, it, right here, it's a little bit hard for Musa to get like much lateral hip movement, okay? Um, when you're here and you wanna attack, <clears throat> the arms are gonna be in different positions. Sometimes they're bent like this. Sometimes they, they're like this, you know, or occasionally they're like this on this side. Yeah, so they can be in any uh, different configuration. Let's say he was being kind of defensive here. So his arms can be like this. I'm gonna put my head down this way. So if, uh, if I keep my chin like this, when he raises his forearm, it's gonna like push against my neck and it makes it hard for me to put pressure down. So as soon as my head goes back, I'm gonna lose position. He's gonna recover his body. <clears throat> So here, like this, and I'm making like a, Motion like this, okay. So my chin goes down, I kind of look toward his legs. Now as he raises this arm here, it's much harder for him to create space. So just like that. <clears throat> you just kind of put your cheek on, on his form. Okay. Um, so here, I'm just gonna grab here, and now <clears throat> his arm's bent. What I'm gonna do is let my body do that. I'm gonna push my body across to come like that. So here, I open up his elbow. Once I open up his elbow here, now I'm in a position where I can start to attack better. I can go to the mount <clears throat> because I've started to open him up. I would have to worry about this close arm if I want him out. So, um, see how this arm's close over here? This, I would need to beat that. So now I can go to the mount. If I go to the mount here, what's gonna happen is he has inside control of this. So as I mount, he's, he's gonna end up starting to recover. So <clears throat> I'm inside control here. I'm gonna drop my chin a little bit. I'm going to start to push across, okay? Once I push across, I'm either going to attack this arm or I'm going to go to mount. So here, if I get here like this, in this position with my hips really low, I can bring this arm out. It comes across the front. I'm just looking for his hand here and here. And now you've got the upward shoulder lock. Okay, so once the, once the arm gets out, I've opened up his elbow, and I need to keep my hips like controlling his arm over here. Here. So I have like sprawling pressure on his close arm. And then look, this just comes out. I'm looking for his wrist and hand. I get his wrist in hand, driving my elbow down right next to his head. I grab my own wrist like this, and then look, don't, don't do this where I raise my right elbow. I'm just gonna drag my right elbow to his hip. So here, not here. I'm not trying to do this, like that. If you look at it, look at how much Look how much his shoulder moves. So if I go here, just pulling it down, it gets tight. So when the arm's up, if you pull the elbow down to the hip, the arm gets tight. It's the opposite if it's this way. So if, if we're like this, if I was doing a Kimura, as I pull it up here, it's gonna get tight. 
if you're in like the upward shoulder lock position, as it comes down, it's going to get tighter. Okay, so we're here, this way. Here, I start to use my shoulder, and I'm just keeping my sprawling pressure, so he feels kind of stuck here. Now I can bring this out, catch here. Okay, so that would be going for the shoulder. If, if I get this out over here and I don't feel like I can quite get it for whatever reason, I can use this knee over here to beat that elbow. Now I can go to mount easily because <clears throat> I've started to open up a space. I just need to be able to put my knee in here this way. So here in this position, I'm not giving up any position. If I put my foot here, he's going to trap it like the order guard. See if I put my foot in the middle. <laughs> so let go for some. I can still pass from there, but <clears throat> if I have my foot here like this, I'm in this position, my foot isn't ever going to go here. It's just going to go here. And then my toes need to come together, and then I can stabilize. If you get the elbow up, <clears throat> I would try to keep it up. Because once his arm is like this, it's really hard for him to escape here. Because his, uh, his arm's so far out of position, I'm really close to like arm triangle, a lot of bad stuff for him. So, Often what I'll do is just kind of raise that, connect, I'll just connect his arm to his head here, and then you can cross your legs, you can grapevine, you can cross your legs high or low, <clears throat> or under the hips, depending on where they are. But your hips are low, and you have this position. Because here he, he's going to have a hard time escaping. It is going to be super hard is you have many things <clears throat> that he has to undo before he can get out of mount. He's got to get his legs free, and he's got to get his elbow back down. <clears throat> it's a really bad position. So here, start to drive. I have sprawling pressure here. So I keep my hip low. Um, going way out this way. But my hips are going to be heavy. And then <clears throat> I'm going to bring this knee inside, beat that elbow. Now once I beat that elbow, my knee comes up here. And all my weight is over here. At this point now, I just bring this leg off. And then my legs need to come inside. If I can connect his arm to his head, he's going to be in, in a lot of trouble here. 